Phantom. Or Well, that's a better idea. Less height, more of it. This episode of Bear Hanging brought to you by Ursac. Ursac, yes. Hang it in a tree, kids. Hang it in a tree. <laughs>
we'll have clean water tomorrow night to clean our filter. So some good gravel here. Some nice, sorry, some nice sand there. And this will be camp. And that'll be our view. Oh wait. That's all that. I'll show you around, I guess, what there is left to see when we get set up. Well, this will be a short uh, tour of camp. <laughs> There's no privy or bear hang to show you. Uh, we've set up over here. Scott's, Scott's here, John's there, I'm there, and Neil is in self-exile somewhere way over there. <laughs> I think he heard that I snored. What do you think? I think so, yeah. Anyway, look back. Look at that. We came in that way. Isn't that just ridiculous? I mean, wow. This could be a day hike. It's actually not difficult. A couple spots I'd be careful if I had kids with me that were young, but like, you know, the gorge with the log, uh, with the log bridges. There are logs on the bridge thing. <laughs> I can't even speak. Oh, I can't even speak. We're going to have a little quiet time and some supper and, uh, well, then I'll wrap it up, let you know what we're up to tomorrow. One last panorama around camp in this wind, which is whipping. I'm gonna scroll up here. Look at this. Gorgeous night. The sun's painting the wall, but it's not painting us anymore. I got the puffy jacket on. Wind's coming straight down the valley there, the guys. We just finished supper. And there's our target tomorrow, the glacier. We're gonna go up. Well, once we get on the glacier, probably about four kilometers make a left which will take us into Castle Guard Meadows and probably traverse most of the length of it which is going to be amazing uh, just sitting here tonight I was joking earlier I said look even this is a destination for tonight I'd be pretty happy because it's so stunning here but windy and it's making it a bit chilly and as you can see with our tents you know I mean I've got the I was I got the freestanding tent uh, kit up there with g-packs but that has a the tendency as I mentioned before to pancake and it was I didn't have a pole on this side before and you could see it dipping down, dipping down, dipping down. And I can't get it much tighter. So I put poles in there tonight as well. I probably could have then have done without the freestanding stuff. But if you do have a Z-Pax uh, duplex and you use the freestanding uh, kit, there is a tendency in wind for the pancake to happen. And uh, unless I'm doing something wrong, well, I've never mean, talked to others that have had the same issue. So a uh, quick one pole uh, kind of solves the issue. So anyway about that yep tomorrow up the glacier probably 16 kilometers to the campsite at uh, castle guard meadows oh man i can't wait it's gonna be epic we'll see you in the morning morning day two and uh wow water flow has decreased look at this waterfall i showed you yesterday look uh, look a trickle that is the sign of glacial melt as is this river, and uh, still going, of course, but not nearly like it was last night. A lot of exposed rocks. Sun's starting to peak up just a bit over the ridge, and we're having breakfast. So, big day for us. And, uh, yeah, what I say, about 16K to the campsite in Kesselgar Meadows, but we will be in the meadows long before that, once we get up over the glacier. So, uh, yeah, already smiling. This is gonna be an epic day. A uh, little breakfast and coffee first, however, and then, uh, well, that way. Just want to give you some perspective before we go and give a good opportunity. So there's uh, Neil over there. Now, Neil's not that far from me, according to my brain. And there's the waterfall last night we uh, picked up our water from, very clean, and I, I, I can't even show you this on video, but John and Scott are over there. I can see them getting water, but my goodness, like, I, I'm going to zoom in as much as I can. There, there he is, right in the middle of the frame. Look, oh, he's moving. And now come back out. <laughs> That's the scale. It's really hard here, you know, with the human brain, having a hard time with perspective. So my point Looking at that glacier, you're like, oh, we're right there at the toe of it. No, we're nowhere near the toe of it. And we have four kilometers to walk up that thing. And it's, it's, the perspective out here is, it's just so vast. And there's very little that gives you perspective until you see, you know, people like that. So hopefully that wasn't boring, but it's fascinating to me. 
All right, we're underway and we're just noticing these, uh, these straight lines that we think are just carved here. Now, as I said, I think yesterday, US military used this glacier for testing, uh, I think for the Alaska Highway for vehicles and stuff. I don't know. I, don't quote me on that. I recall reading something in the Canadian Rockies Trail Guide, but you know, this, it looks almost man-made. It's so perfectly straight. The glacier has receded 2K since the 50s, so we have a lot of walking to do before we get to uh, before we get to the actual toe, and then we have to scale that, and then go up the middle of her and go left. But uh, what well, a nice day! Not too hot yet. A little bit of blue sky coming our way, so this is going to be <laughs> phenomenal. Well, you can see it's getting rougher as we get closer. Picky, picky. You gotta watch your step, but also try to keep an eye where you're going. Not a big deal, of course, but a little extra work. As we say, always look back. Probably do it again when we get on the glacier. A little smoky down there, but look at that view. Just stopped here and he'll find a better route for us. Look at this, just flowers growing in the middle of nothing. I know I do this a lot in the channel, but it, life fascinates me, how it finds a way to take root. So cool. We were just joking that that cairn's like a joke. Like, how would you get over there? So, I mean, even this gully, you know. <laughs> That said, that cairn could have been there for quite a while. Uh, and then every year the erosion would be different, obviously. So we're making progress. We're still picking our way to the uh, toe, trying to find a good approach. And uh, somebody has stacked up a wall here for their tent and bivy. Actually, it looks like a tent to me. There's the, what'd you call this earlier? This ring of rock around your tent? Oh, Druid Circle. Yeah, the Druid Circle. Somebody has camped right here. Right here. Wow, what a night that'd be. We could have camped here. <laughs> Woo. Now, we're thinking about trying to get across this rager. It's a lot bigger than you think. Then we'd have to try to get up right there under the toe. The typical approach is right up here. So uh, everything changes every year. And we're just, well, there's another approach there. If we get across that river, maybe right up there, yeah. All right, stay tuned. We've come down to see where that water's coming out. It's coming out below the glacier, obviously. And we're looking at that spot right there. The skirt up around here and uh, try to get up on her at that location. So uh, yeah, let's see if that works. Well, that's too bad. You don't know that you get here, but uh, there's, we can't get across that. We thought this might be solid through here. Not solid, but at least gravel or rocks. And it's not, so. <sighs> Well, we think we found another way to the same spot. This will be picky right here. <laughs> yep, you're on video. Well, there's the gap we wanted to shoot to get here. We did a little rock surfing down here. Well, Scott's gonna show you how it's done. Oh, I made it easier for you. That's not so hard, actually. Well, that's because Thiga thanked me for that. In. Yeah, no, it's not bad. All right, now we are going there. Oh, baby. What are we doing? All right, a couple steps on the glacier here. All right, now clearing up backwards. I always say look behind. I'm sure I'll even have a better view a little higher up, but smoke's starting to clear out. Oh, man, look at that. Yeah, this is much easier than rock hopping, for really? sure. Making our way up the, uh, the glacier. It's a little, uh, it's easy walking, but a little steeper than I was told. <laughs> Look at this, so. Look at that. There's Scott. Nice 
to the right, you never get to see this. Look at that. Man. We're heading up that way, right in the middle of your frame. The views up here are just incredible. And all the way back, there's John. A little scale for you. Oh! Hard to see the scale of the climb on video, as always. But, uh, and, you know, it looks flat as you look ahead. Walking now, this doesn't look flat. Now we're starting to hit some of the, the bumpier stuff as we head this way. What a spectacular place. I am uh, absolutely in awe. <laughs> Living in the moment, let me tell you. Time to start picking our way left a little bit. As I watch them do that, we look down here. Sorry, broken record, but it's just non-stop. We're starting to discuss uh, the chutes that we're going to have to scramble up as we pick our way through here. Uh, Scott and John have done this before, so they've got the uh, oh, there it is. got the information. No, we're not that far. If I look back, I don't really get much perspective now, but uh, it's, it's a lot steeper and bumpier than it appears. Good exercise. Well, we can see the goal, which is way up there. The bad news is we have to scramble up these chutes. Ah, shoot! Anyway, yeah. Now, Scott's done it, John's done it, so we know it can be done. But man! Right! Yeah, they're no fun. And, uh, but she looks steep. So we're gonna have a break up here and get organized, and you won't see any of this. Well, I'll go, I won't go first. <laughs> so we'll get some on video, but uh, this may be the sketchiest part of the day. This is brutal, it's quicksand. I was literally, here you go, up to my knees. No gators. If you do this, leave your spikes on because it's ice underneath some of this muck. This is, uh, this is treacherous. Well, Scott's heading up first over there with, uh, they've picked that chute. Well, actually that's not true. John and I picked this chute and then they were stuck with that chute. <laughs> well, not exactly. I think he wanted that chute. I think he did too, because he did it before with you. Well, I think that's what he thinks. Yeah, so, he we're, be right. so we're going up this way and around and then up. And once John gets a little ways up, I'll go up a part way, but we have to watch for rocks. They're gonna fall. No trekking poles, we're uh, gloving it. And uh, we're sending the old boys up first. <laughs> what? The young ones can rescue them. All you can rescue them. I'm not that young. Anyway, there'll be no much video of this. Once I get up apart, once John gets up past this first cut, I'll go up. Then maybe I'll get a little video of him climbing. But uh, this is going to be, well, where am I? Hi, how are you? <laughs> this is going to be tough. This will be, uh, be a tough one. But once we get up there, the views are going to be epic. So I'll obviously show you that too. So off we go. Scale is impossible to show you as always on video, but I've already scaled up about a third of the way, maybe a quarter. And there's John. I'm going to wait here a bit in case he uh, loosens some rocks. But so far it's been pretty stable. Lots of work to do. Whew. Here's the reward. So far, more to come. But this is the shoot we, uh, John and I came up. There it is. Again, perspective impossible. Uh, John has sent me three pictures that I'll flash up now on the screen just to give you some scale. There they are. You know what I mean? Like it's really hard to get scale. Somebody has been very kind kind of flag this area from the other direction, which I'm going to show you soon, but look at this. 
I mean, what do you say? What words can you possibly use to uh, describe this place? Just friggin' stunning. I don't know how else to put it. It's work to get here, but it's worth it. Every footstep. And as I said, more to come. There's John right there, and then look down, there's Neil. And he doesn't seem that far away to the eye, does he? But look on video. Like, there's the scale. It's insane. What was the young guys? Right, bring it up there. And we're off. We lingered there for a long time. Could have stayed the whole day. The view was stunning. But you know the prize? We still haven't seen Castle Guard Meadows yet. And the campsite, which has been on my list forever. So, still another amazingness to come. dry and I'm low. John gave me a few hundred milliliters in my water bottle. He had a little extra. And, uh, you can see coming down this ridge, lots of fresh water from the glacier. But, not till we get closer to camp, which is probably still around the 4K mark. Uh, easy walking, however. But a long day with a lot of work uh, early on, as you saw. So, I'll be looking forward to uh, washing up with some of that and drinking some of that. Hopefully soon. Just had a nice break and uh, what a cascade coming down from the glacier there. Gorgeous. Great view here at Terrace Mountain. Just peered over that way and then we get some waterfalls coming down and uh, we're heading toward that tree in the middle of your picture. And just beyond that, not too far, should be camp. Water's low so we're following the creek. This creek does take us right to camp. Camp will be on the left, so why not, right? It's easy walking, it's not deep, a little slippery in times, but, oops. <laughs> but there's even, look, almost a little trail there. Well, these two creeks merge. That's obviously coming, the one on the right from the waterfall, because it's moving. And there was a lot of water moving up there, so this will be our water source for the night. I'm sure. Okay, on this side of it. Less than a kilometer to go. We're getting very close and we fanned out a bit because uh, everybody's GPS kind of has the marker in a different spot. And the only real marker we're looking for is the outhouse. That's, <laughs> that's really all that's there. Even though they tell you to camp within 100 meters of the campsite sign, which may still be there. I'll show you that soon. Uh, the only real structure here is the old outhouse. It's kind of what we're looking for. To, uh, I just did a big scream, woohoo. I was just telling John, no idea how many years I've wanted to see this stupid outhouse. You know what I mean? Yeah. Woo! All good. Castle Guard Meadows Camp. We're here, gentlemen. Yes, we are. And we'll, uh, I'll show you around once we get set up. Yeah. Oh, baby. <laughs> Well, there's my view tonight. Me and the horse flies. <laughs> We've come across the river. Um, not a lot of place to put tents out by the outhouse or up in that clearing, so we've had to come down closer to the water. I decided to come across the river because I don't mind getting my feet wet. Uh, there's Scott, John, and Neil has self-exiled himself again tonight behind there so he could tuck in the shade. Everybody's having a rest because well, what a day. <laughs> I mean, it was ridiculously epic. And it took us a long time to climb the glacier. Well, first of all, it took us a long time to get to the glacier, then climb the glacier, and then climb the chute. I mean, it's a rock scramble, really, up the chute. So, and uh, then, of course, we had to walk a long, dry valley uh, until we get down here to the campsite. So campsite's not easy to find. You need a GPS. I will say this, Gaia, one of the layers, not sure if it's their layer or Back Roads, Map Books, Canada Trails, has the campsite in pretty much the exact right place. And Scott uh, had it marked on his GPS as well from a previous trip. So, so we did make it. Little shot upriver. 
as I'm doing laundry. So just a stunning night. It's getting late, time for some supper and uh, electrolytes and well, I'll wrap it up. There's the watchman, keeping a close eye on us tonight. Up that way, Thompson Pass, a little further to the right is the headwaters of the Castle Guard River. And of course, even further to the right, the glaciers and that beautiful waterfall that we saw coming down on our right-hand side today. There was also snow melt and some springs water falling on the left-hand side as we came down today, which is now your right-hand side. Why am I bringing this up? Well, look at this. Look how clear this water is now. This was, uh, well, this was opaque today. We couldn't see through it. A lot of rock flour from the glacier melt. That's all ended now because it's, well, it's evening. In fact, there was a little waterfall here that I was using to uh, get my water for the afternoon because typically a slow moving channel like this in a braid is gonna let the silt fall down and you will get, uh, well, a little, a little clearer water. But this is, well, much improved this evening and uh, I'm gonna fill up for the night. Now, what are we doing tomorrow? Great question. We have options. We can stay here and do a zero, go explore maybe the cave entrance. Uh, there's some waterfalls around to see. The old uh, campsite here could be explored a bit more and just this whole area is stunningly beautiful. We could go up to Watchman Lake or Thompson Pass. We have a lot of options. Kind of an off the chart option. We could go down 5K to the Castle Guard River and camp for the night. It's a short little walk, it's downhill. We know what the trail is, which we'll talk about when we leave here, whatever day that is. And uh, we could have a beautiful spot tomorrow night and shorten our days out. Why? Well, they burned along the uh, trail uh, for grizzly habitat last year uh, and we don't know what condition it's going to be in we have 35k from here 5k down to the uh, well to the trail proper let's say from the meadows not no big deal but then 30k what are the conditions going to be like do we need an extra day to get out we have no idea but we're going to find out together so wow finally what a day what a day we had today. I mean, we had every terrain you could think of. Uh, scrambling up the moraine to get to the glacier. And then we went up the glacier and then we scrambled up these chutes and then we came down a long, long meadow and got to this amazing place. It was an epic day. I had the perma smile all day. I was living in the moment because every moment was spectacular. Last couple K were hot. We were glad to get to camp and find it. And just look at this. Castle Guard Meadows. You can only get here if you walk in. <laughs> You know what I'm going to say, and it is spectacular. See you in the morning. Morning, day three. Look at the water levels. Remember I talked about this last night? <laughs> Let me just zoom in there for you. Wow. Way lower and way clearer. So interesting to know. Good sleep last night, really quiet, uh, nice and cool, no condensation, and now the bugs are out. And no, I'm not talking about John and Scott. <laughs> uh, we're gonna ponder the day and let you know what's going on. Gorgeous day and we've got a plan now, so I'll share that with you. We. Um, We've decided, because of incoming rain tomorrow, 100% chance of rain, that we're going to uh, do a little day hiking around here. We're gonna to try to find the entrance to the caves, uh, maybe a waterfall, and then we'll probably come back mid-afternoon, pack things up, and head down three-ish or three -ish K to um, the intersection with the Castle Guard River where Scott reports there's a nice little campsite. That'll get us kind of on track for tomorrow. We won't have to bushwhack through these meadows to find the trail in the rain. And it'll also buy us some extra time uh, if the burn has made the trail out of here slow. And, you know, we may need a lot more time to get out of here than we thought. So smart move, uh, well thought out. We're gonna do a little bit of sightseeing, which I will show you if we see anything. And then I'm obviously gonna show you the trail down and mark it on my GPS UTM coordinates and head down just to, uh, well, kind of shorten the hike out in case we need more time. So there's your update. I'm just packing a few things up now in advance and we're gonna uh, have a little look around Castle Guard Meadows. Gonna zoom in here for a little shot of the uh, this end of Watchman Lake and of course Thompson Pass up that way. We've peeked out 
And Scott's track tells us that the caves are just down there a bit, but we're gonna have to cut way right and try to intersect the uh, old trail. And, uh, cause nobody's gonna do any scaling today. But there it is, what a gorgeous shot. The tail end of Watchman Lake, Thompson Pass. Scott has led us to the promised land. Hallelujah. Well, strike your rock and water will come forth. Oh, well, let's do that. <laughs> oh, wait, it is. So, Castle Guard Caves. What, is this one entrance or the entrance? This is the entrance. The entrance, ooh. Can't go in here in the summer, only the winter. I wouldn't do it either way. Oh my God, there it is, Scott. This is like finding a unicorn, really. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that a boy, Scott Meadows. Wow. There's the cliff we couldn't come down. Yeah, we were trying to get down that cliff. We're doing as the crow flies navigation to a UTM coordinate. Oh, it's flip here. Careful, All right, look at this. Oh, feel the cold breeze. Oh, I'll take the cold breeze, son. She warm. Okay. It smelled like marijuana. Did you get a whiff of that? That smells a little weedy. Doesn't a little weedy. Oh, those spelunkers. Any bears in here? God, this water I can tank up. Look at this. Any bears? Oh, you know what? Look, look up here. So there's a sign. We're going to pick our way across. There's a sign telling you to stay the heck out. Castle Guard Caves. Woohoo! <laughs> so uh, we're up here. Warning entry prohibited except by permit from the superintendent of Banff National Park. And then over here, somebody has scratched into the what we think, Scott thinks, the lockbox. What are you hiding? <laughs> Did you read that? What lives here? What's in there? Ooh. There it is. Oh my goodness. A little shot further up, thanks to Scott's headlamp and my iPhone 14. What lurks beyond? Ooh. Good shot of looking back out. The boy's standing there. And, uh, wow. You know, in a storm? Well, you could, any port in a storm. Yeah, of course, you'd be worried about getting flooded. We're just looking left here. Yeah, I would worry about being flooded, especially maybe in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. This is wide open to explore. No gate. Mm -hmm. yeah, part, Scott was just saying that this... Yeah, go ahead, Scott. Scott <laughs> was just... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Scott. Check it out. Uh, Scott says this goes all the way to the Columbia Ice Field. You can look up at the ice. So I'm getting an education here. Scott's going in. Keep going. Is that? Whoa! Oh, jeez! What do you see? If you turn, you get too narrow, continue. All right. All right, so the boys just got their pictures. Listen to the noise for a sec. If you can hear the hum and the rumble. Hear that? That water came up, like, within what? Seconds? Yeah. Within five, six seconds, that water came way up. I don't know if you can hear that rumble. There's a rumble, and that water came up within five or six seconds. It's absolutely crazy. So we hightailed it out of there after taking a couple of pictures, which I'll flash up now. Have a look at those. Wow. All right, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna find higher ground. We've been standing here for just a couple of minutes. Look at the water flow now. Like, let's flash back for a second to us entering. Here it is. Yeah, and like within three minutes, and we've been here a few minutes now, but within three minutes, we're at this level and it continues to rise. And uh, hypothesis from John, I think we think he's right. That hum we heard was air escaping somewhere, you know, same relationship you have with a bottle or something like that when your the air has to go in when the water comes out. So, wow, that's amazing timing. Scott, nice going. We've been here 30 minutes later, we wouldn't have gone in. No, if we'd been here 30 minutes, if we'd been here 10 minutes later, we wouldn't have gone in. Wow. All right, so we just bushwhacked our way through uh, following our GPSs, intersected the actual Castle Guard Meadows Trail, which we're going to climb back up to camp. And of course, in a little bit, we'll head down it to the Castle Guard River. Well, 
we're coming back into camp from our exploration and a little lunch and probably head down to Castlegard River and uh, tuck in for the night with the rain forecast. What a day. What a cave. And what a water flow now compared to this morning. Woo! What was a rock hop is now the Ford cam. Oh. Now, next sandbar. And we're gonna get the boots wet without the gaiters. Well, well, here we go. Oh, ho, ho, ho. John and I are gonna head out early. I'm, uh, I'm hot and there's nowhere to get much shade here. So we're gonna start heading down as the other guys get packed up now. <laughs> Seconds ago, I just crossed this channel right there. And now it is way higher than it was before. Isn't that ridiculously amazing? <laughs> wow, wee wow, wee wow. Well, time to get wet. All right, we've just come out of Castlegar Meadows campsite. We're going to uh, head over here and intersect the trail. It's very faint, but it's there. And uh, it should lead us straight down to a cairn that Laurent put there. And the campsite that Scott mentions is there along the river. So, all right, off we go. Woohoo, what are we going to see next? We kind of fanned out there. I've just come on the trail. Over here. Coming around your way. It's very faint, but it's here. I'll share my track with you, but uh, I can tell you on this trail, at this point, the guy at Topo in meters has this trail pretty close to where it is. Back roads, map books, Canada, nowhere near it. We're descending pretty fast. I mean, the track does fade in and out, but it's still discernible as a single track. So, you know, if you've been out here a lot, this you know this is a trail. <laughs> like, it's absolutely identifiable. Well, we're getting close to the river. Well, we say that. We thought we were almost there, but man, we slowed down. It's been a bushwhack-a-palooza and uh, deadfall. And yeah, I mean, just look. This is a, actually, I turned the camera on in a section that wasn't bad because I didn't want to fall earlier. But it's been a struggle. Descended down into the uh, Castlegard River for us. It's known today the Mud River. Look at that. Wow. The trail used to go down along here and got all washed out. And if there's a little point down there on the end, that's kind of our goal. Now, a lot of times you could walk down this river and get to that. But I'll show you our plan in a minute. Brought you up here to show you the old sign that says Castle Guard Meadows, that way. So, I'm going to turn back. In fact, we're probably going to have to go back up that way tomorrow to cross that monstrosity up there, which I'm going to show you in a second. All right, the boys are down in the eating area doing their thing. And uh, I'm going to show you everything over here. So, Scott said, you know, oh, it's a nice little campsite. And usually people say that little means, you know, it's a nice little campsite. It's actually a little campsite. So uh, there's Neil. I think Scott's going over there. Those are my boots. And then if I come back through here, you'll see where I was exiled with the guys. Uh, there's John and Neil. We can't show you Scott right now. He's uh, having a bath. Shower. Well, okay, shower. Little uh, area there for... <laughs> oh. Okay, John's put himself here. If you keep walking along this uh, this rock bed, you'll find me. Sorry, guys, this is bumpy. Ah! Oh, you'll find me over here. There we are. Stu tucked in here. Swing up here a bit. Oh. So you had a bit of a struggle to get to camp. But I do want to show you something right over here. 
All right, I'll zoom in. There's my tent. I'll zoom back out. I've walked all the way along here. Nice fresh water there. And here it is, Outrum's Shower Bath Falls. Woo! Look at these beasts today. Holy moly moly. I'm getting soaked standing here. Look at the amount of water coming out of there. And we have to go up around it tomorrow because this all comes out of a hole. So we can walk right around the top of it. Hopefully there'll be something to show you. I'm not sure. It's a sketchy trail because it's not the real trail. But it's something we have to use now because of this giant washout on the Castleguard River. Oh, it's raining over there. Well, time to batten down the hatches. But look at this. Absolutely stunning. Well, what a day. Tucked in my tent now because of thunderstorms that were not forecast by Garmin. We thought we'd have a lovely leisurely evening here, pondering tomorrow's 19 kilometer day planned, of course, to uh, Terrace Creek. Um, we'll have to wait and see what the conditions are like, because conditions today at the end were pretty bad. And uh, gosh, Castle Guard Meadows, this whole trail, we saw the caves today. Um, <laughs> that was just a thrill to be in the caves. And uh, then the water came, and the guys are getting their pictures taken. I'll flash that up now. Uh, Scott and Neil. Pardon me, Scott had come out, and Neil was up there, and we're trying to get the light right, and you know, we're, <laughs> we're trying to act like photographers, and all of a sudden, the water just gushes in, and you hear this woo of the air going out or in, or whatever it was doing to compensate for the water, and I like, Neil, get out, because we didn't know what was going to happen, like, we're not spelunkers or anything like that, we had no clue, but my God, what a place to see, and the waterfalls, and the campsite at Castle Guard Meadows. You know, I know people say, oh, well, it's not that big deal anymore. But look where I camped, right along the riverside. We loved it. But the trail's disappearing like so many out here. And I just wonder how long it's going to be before it's pretty impossible to get to it from this side. Getting, getting, it, to it, uh, getting to it rather like we did from the glacier side, not a problem. But from this side, and this is our exit side now, what are we going to face tomorrow? And we don't know. Uh, we expect a rainy day tomorrow, which just started apparently a little bit early. Um, and 19K to Terrace Creek from here at these stunning, stunning waterfalls. This is an epic, epic hike. I mean, we've seen everything. We've climbed the glacier, moraine, up chutes, down Castle Guard Meadows, been in the cave. What are we gonna see tomorrow as we head back to the car? Um, you know, down the Alexandra River. Like, I don't know, but we'll know soon. For you, it starts in five seconds. For me, I gotta go to sleep. I'll see you in the morning. Good morning and welcome to day four. And look at the blue skies. Where'd they come from? <laughs> I'll tell you where they came from. The overnight thunderstorms that were relentless. I mean, we were rushed to bed by one and they never stopped. And I think that's the rain they were thinking we were gonna get this morning. It pushed through overnight and that is a huge blessing because look at this. Now that said, the prediction is a little more later. So everybody's up and we're kind of getting organized to, uh, well, you can see here, Oakham's bath, shower. We have to go up around, as I mentioned just a few minutes ago in the video, and down to that point that's kind of in the middle and then we rejoin the trail proper. What I noticed this morning is that, uh, well, hi there. Uh, what, what I noticed this morning is that uh, Gaia's uh, metric topo map for Canada is actually pretty accurate here in Castle Guard Meadows. And it's actually showing the cutoff and that part that we have to do this morning. So that'll be helpful. The last thing I'll say is it's cold. I mean, it's cold. Uh, there was a time last night during the thunderstorms I thought maybe it might snow. <laughs> it's that cold this morning, just above freezing. What a difference 12 hours can make. Hopefully I can say the same when we're finished today. We are planning to do 19K to Terrace Creek, but conditions, they will dictate. Well, the sun's peeking out for us and that's a bonus. We didn't expect any sunshine this morning, but uh, we're underway, heading up this hill. Probably about 100 meters to the cutoff. Scott's got it marked from his last trip here. 
and Gaia seems to show it so we're gonna see if that's true and I'll let you know certainly one last look up here at Watchman but we're heading as I've said several times that way and it should be a wet day in the woods so this is good trail compared to what we've been on if I go down here and show you we just come up over top of one spring coming out of the a hole in the hill we've got a few more to go there's a flag so while it may not look like oh ouch well it may not look like much of a trail we're on the right path well, remember that big waterfall the bath shower we showed you last night there it is coming out of the a hole in the wall all that water that's incredible it really is and for pers i don't know how to give you perspective like it looks so small you know like scott get out of stand there <laughs> okay so we're coming up to another spring which we walk right across the source <laughs> wow that's something eh so scott's right beside a flag it's blue Oh yeah, there it is. And we were just discussing that most of the flagging and, and directions come from the other way because that's typically how people would come in. We've come in from the glacier and a little sketchier for us because that's the unusual route. Oh boy, speaking of unusual routes, good luck. Scott, it's been nice knowing you. <laughs> we just came down the stream here a little and you can just step right across here. Nice big jump and right back on the trail. I want to wash out along here. We've come along the river. I'm not sure where the trail is. Or Laurence Cairn. But it should be right here. We think this might be a cairn here, not that. But up here. Yeah, that's a cairn, eh? It's firing, actually. <laughs> no, right here. That almost looks like a cairn right there, yeah. So then we should be heading down this way. We're walking both there. No, that's a cornice right there. I talked about this already this summer when I was at uh, Horseshoe. That's definitely Cornus. Stay back. Niels, back in. Oh, come back in. That's a Cornus. We just stopped for a little break. I'll try to show you this on video. There it is, middle of the frame. That's the sign to Castle Guard Meadows. Right there. And our camp, as you know, is just below it. And we've done a kilometer in less than an hour. Actually, less than a kilometer in an hour. Let's put it that way. Bushwhacking should be over, though, for now. So the trail definitely comes back up by the river, and I got, we're just talking. I mean, I don't think this trail has many years left. Doesn't go over there, does it? I don't know. No. No. So see, there you go. Confusion. The trail doesn't have many years left because of this erosion. These glaciers are melting so fast. There's so much water that uh, I think our only access to the meadows is going to end up being the glacier, like we took. So. Yeah, we're gonna have a little root finding here because of this erosion, I think, Scott. So you can see why we're walking up in the bushwhack because that's the old trail. And we're going this way, but sometimes it just goes right off into the Castle Guard River. Oops, sorry. GPS, absolutely necessary on this hike. All right, we're gonna, uh, you could kind of hop across here if you wanted to. Scott's going to javelin himself over using the small log and the big log. Well, look at this. We can see the trail on the other side of this monstrosity. This could be right at our limits. Yeah. Oh, boy. This will not be on the Ford cam. <laughs> All right, there was some debate. And I think the play is going to be out here and then try to get across. <laughs> Let me get my Garmin ready. <laughs> that is the second hardest forward I've done in my life. And you're going to look at that and go, well, that's no big deal. It's really, you know what? It's not bad. But you've got to walk on an upstream angle. And you've got to glide your feet along the bottom. For God's sake, don't lift your feet up. You slide them along until you find a good grip. You wait, then you move the next foot. It's very, very methodical. 
we've wrung our socks out and our boots, which have made really little difference, so we'll stop again in a while. Pruny feet make blisters. And it's chilly, we didn't get any help from the sun. Some dark clouds up there, but we're gonna follow the creek down now for a while toward the river and hope that the trail improves, because quite frankly, we are not making any time at all. A uh, couple of kilometers in a couple of hours. Uh, this could be a two-nighter just to get out of here, depending on trail conditions ahead, so. But we're fine, we're ahead of schedule, so no big deal, but. Yeah, what next? What next? There's a little, uh, couple little pictures of the guys crossing. I'll flash them up. I didn't video them. And of course I said, I, I yelled back and I said, would somebody please kindly video me going across? That's how I put it, very kindly. And uh, no. Yeah, look at that. Look at that, how narrow that is. Wow. Trails opened up for us a little bit slow we're not making much progress in the distance department it's just one of those types of trails i mean the first couple kilometers this morning were a gargantuan effort and then of course you're crossing the river and you have to get all organized there and then on the other side so we've got lots of flexibility in our timing and we'll ponder that in a bit but it's nice to be able to walk you know like on a trail that looks like this for at least now <laughs> We just sat and had a nice lunch here in the sunshine on the shore of the Castlegard River and uh, pondered our options for today and it's certainly not going to be 19. Probably be in the 11k range. And then we can ponder tomorrow, depending on conditions. Uh, we have extra time, as I've said, so we're in no rush, but uh, the conditions this morning were pretty bad and uh, slowed us down a lot. So 19k would not be probably doable the way we started this morning and the time we started this morning. So sitting there, dried some stuff off. Feet are feeling a lot drier now after that river ford. And so we're gonna look for a campsite about 600 meters on this side of the Castle Guard Patrol cabin and see if we like it. We're not sure where the burn touched, whether it touched this trail or not. But that may be a factor as well if it did in that area. You're up to date with everything I know <laughs> in my own little mind. This is certainly a lot better walking than we had for the first two and a half hours this morning. There's mummy spruce grouse, wouldn't be a hiking video without one. And the baby, if you can see it, just over there. We're not gonna hurt you, sweetie. Well, the little one's scared, eh? I would be too, Scott looks scary up there. <laughs> There's often more than one baby around here. Yeah. yeah. We're back into this. Scott loves this stuff in, in particular. Yeah, he loves it. <laughs> You can tell when everybody's tired, it gets really quiet. <laughs> so uh, we're descending now to some little creek and along it will be an old campsite, which is about 600 meters this side of the patrol cabin. And one of those will be home tonight. All right, the guys are leaving. I want to show you this. This is the, uh, the guys are leaving. I'll explain that in a second. This is this little campsite mentioned in the Canadian Rockies Trail Guide. There's a pretty old firing ice. You've been here a while. And you could sit here, of course, but then we looked around and we have four tents, right? So we're not picky. That's a pretty good flat spot there. There's another one probably right there that somebody could tuck into. And then uh, maybe over here somewhere. So we're gonna head up toward the patrol cabin, which is about 500 meters from here. I don't think that's a very good spot to camp either, but uh, Scott and John have been here. And remember a little meadow right around the uh, patrol cabin where we could probably find some flat spots after last night's debacle with camping from a flat and spacious perspective, uh, maybe find some, some room. So the thing I'll say about this little old campsite is super, super crystal clear water. We're hoping to pick this up near wherever we end up, just down the trail a bit, because it's wonderful. 
Well, there's the outhouse, which means you're at a cabin. Typically, here we are. The Castle God River Cabin, Warden Service, Banff National Park. Yeah, so this is it. And the outhouse is locked. Why in the world would you lock an outhouse? Leave the wood out, but don't. <laughs> Jeez, whatever. Nice spot though, view-wise, look at that. Very nice. Okay, if you're going to exit here, you're going to come down here to the right. Down here to the right. Boy, there's uh, not much here, is there? So we're going to head down this way toward the river and see if we can find that, uh, that meadow they remember. Coming down into a little marsh here. I'm going to bear left and try to catch what's left to that bridge, and then I'll show you these signs. Some sort of weather station or some other beacon out here. Oh, hang on. Over there. Yeah, so that's like a rain gauge or something, actually. Oh, yeah. Castle Guard River. Something Mile. Watchman Lake. Castle Guard Meadows. Cinema Lake. Oh, they're giving you the mileage. Gotcha. I'm going to zoom in on that for you here. Go ahead, guys. Don't mind me. I'm going to zoom in here. There we go. Look at that. Hold that on for you. That nice history That's fading that's about, <laughs> literally well we've come a little further past the patrol cabin and found this meadow that uh, john and scott remembered and there's the alexander glacier holy mackerel look at our view tonight isn't that something lots of great flat spots and it's very very dry here uh the wildflowers have had their season there's a few paintbrushes still hanging on but uh very, very dry, but very, very beautiful. Nice breeze. We had some sun earlier. And so, of course, there's the clothesline. There's Scott's pile of Scott. Um, what else we got going on over here? Well, there I am over there. Doing a little work for Neil on his uh, tent, which was a bit leaky during the deluge last night. Scott, your tent was pretty wet too, eh? Soaking wet, but it's pretty dry already. Yeah, it doesn't take long, really. Yeah, I had a, mine was like condensation inside, wet on the outside. There I am there. Just going to show you over here the water source. It's the same creek we were kind of following all the way down in the last, say, I don't know, 35 or 40 minutes. Easy access down there. A little bit of a trickle right over there. And that's where I suggest you would go. And it's crystal, crystal clear water unless you um, stir up the bottom. So, so we're going to continue to get set up, have a little supper. And ponder tomorrow, and I'll take you through that in just a little bit. Who's gonna take the film? Oh! That's not a bad one. Maybe we could use that. Yeah. Oh, that's a better idea. Well, Less there. height, more women. This episode of Bear Hanging brought to you by Ursac. Ursac, yes. Hang it in a tree, kids. Hang it in a tree. <laughs> We've had a lovely evening, very relaxing, had a nice supper, sat around and just enjoyed our hard work today. And it was hard work. I uh, did Skylines 26K on my last day, including up out of Curator and up over the notch in about the same amount of time it took us to do what we did today, which I flashed up at the beginning of this day. And I'm going to guess now, because I haven't done the editing yet, that it was somewhere around the 11K mark. It was a long 11K because of the conditions, especially as we started out. Uh, yeah, it was it was difficult. So, you know, Scott booked this for six nights in the random zone, which means we have options. So if we decide tomorrow we only want to do 8K to Terrace Creek and kind of take a leisurely day if the weather is good, and that's kind of key for that kind of day, then we will. If we want to hike 20K to the car, then we can do that as well. The weather will uh, have a lot to say about that, how we feel will have a lot to say about that, but we have options here in these random areas, and I think that's awesome. You know, this trail so far has had everything. I mean, we have I said it before, we've hiked the moraine, the glacier, the meadows, and then, wow, some of the stuff I showed you today. It was hard, uh, hard. The trail in this section has deteriorated, and I think the road's gonna be pretty good for the rest of the way down. So, uh, you know, I don't think it's gonna be too difficult, but you never know what you're gonna see. I think one of the reasons we're optimistic is because just before the burn here uh, last year in this area, I think they came in the road quite a ways and took down some deadfall so they'd have access if they needed it. So that really may aid our walk out tomorrow. And of course, the other big question is, are we gonna walk through the burn? No idea, but we'll find out tomorrow. 
and you'll find out in five seconds. See you in the morning. Good morning, a little shot of our path out of here this morning. Used to be an old road. You can kind of make out the width of it a little bit. And we're heading down that way and then to the left. Another unsettled night, a little mix of rain and not rain. <laughs> and then of course our, uh, our glacier. Alexander Glacier and uh, she calved this morning, we think, or a big chunk of rock fell over there. C contend to sound like thunder, but uh, thunder has its own distinctive properties and this did not reflect those. So we're thinking something fell up in the valley and it was pretty large. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> how, do I, how do I look? Uh, feel great, good night's sleep. Uh, as I said, a little rain, but everything's dry this morning, which is weird. Typically when it rains, you wake up, everything's soaking wet, but it's dry. So we are in a definitely in a little, quite a dry spot here. Met some hikers last night coming in, said six hours to the car. Um, your mileage may vary. And we will go through the burn at some point. So uh, kind of excited to see how that all plays out. Apparently there is still a lot of uh, deadfall, but uh, the word a lot is relative and uh, experience based so we'll see what happens i'm sure they're probably right so but, but fingers crossed that it's not as bad as it sounds anyway the usual over here at shea how coffee and breakfast and then uh, down the trail just finished breakfast i want to show you something because people talk about this all the time it's july all right in the canadian rockies you see that up there Let's see if i can get a better picture that's fresh snow i came in overnight with the rain we had you can see it up at the top where the snow line is. And if I just, uh, pardon the mess, <clears throat> we just had breakfast. If I come over here too and just zoom up toward the glacier past Scott, right up in there, see that? That is fresh snow from overnight. So the freeze level obviously not too far above our heads. So that's the thing, when you're out here in the Rockies in July, you can have anything like that. And you have to be prepared for changing conditions. I mean, a couple of days ago, it was blistering hot. And this morning it's, uh, well, a few degrees above zero. So, and off we go. Hoping for good trails. Nice little view of the river flats. Oh boy, isn't that beautiful? Good morning. One last look back. There comes Scott down there in the river flats. Yeah. Beautiful, just beautiful. Well, getting a little messier now. A little messier now. And a little wetter. Didn't expect uh, it to be quite as wet or overgrown. So I might have to reassess my rain kilt. <laughs> Remnants here of an old bridge. We gotta go over that way. All right, we're coming into the burn. You could smell it before you saw it. Well, you could see it ahead, but this was a prescribed burn. And from my recollection, it was for the restoration of some good grizzly habitat or something like that. But uh, there's been lots of deadfall just as we started this section. More to come. Just gonna show you these beautiful flowers with the backdrop of the fire. We've just been discussing, I'm sure you know, natural fire is absolutely part of renewal of the planet and uh, prescribed burns are a different discussion, but we'll trust that the park knows what they're doing. But look at that, beauty. Oh, down into the burn along the river flats. Pretty interesting to look at this. Yeah, wow. Out to the river flats, gorgeous. You can see the burn continuing along the left here. We're gonna to have to get up in that to bypass this area. So a uh, quick little water stop and uh, up into the woods. I see a trail up ahead here. We're picking our way through the burn now. Before the burn, you still had to pick your way up here because of the washouts. So there is an old trail ahead of me, but does that go to nothing? Hard to say. There'll be some experimentation through this section, I would think. Oh my goodness, that section was brutal. There's no way to be on the trail because of all the deadfall, so you're 
hopping over burnt logs and well things like you see straight ahead but in multiples looks like there's more of it ahead so it's funny I uh you know I'm on some groups and stuff and somebody posted once listen I think it was the West Coast Trail. It's lovely seeing all your happy pictures, but can you please post some pictures of when you're unhappy? Well, I'm gonna be honest with whoever that was, that's a big ask. Because when you're going through stuff like I just did and we're about to, you don't have time. <laughs> you're not thinking about taking pictures. You're thinking about, how am I getting through here? Like, look at this coming up ahead. Look at this, this goes on for hundreds of meters and so there you go you want to see how it sucks there it is yes that's the trail coming into the old campsite at Terrace Creek look at this <laughs> tenting and fires permitted so we're about 13k from the car. We know the last five is reportedly fast. So that would be just under an hour for us for the last five. So my vote will be to move on. It's not even noon. But uh, this is Terrace Creek, the old campsite. And it would be a wonderful spot to spend the evening. For sure. Look at this. Wow, look at this thing. It's a great campsite. Yeah, look at that. We liked it here. <laughs> As soon as I saw that thing, John, we're stopping. That was the last time you were out, eh? Yeah, yeah. I feed into here, though, too, a couple of years ago. All right, you can see the guys down there after a leisurely lunch. And uh, the trail's back over this way. If I zoom in here, you can see a little pink cairn. So that doesn't really help us because we're going in a different direction. But, oops, sorry for my thumb. That's a trail. And I can see the cut line right down there. Look ahead, you can see where the trail is. Right in the middle of your screen, going right up there. Lots of little crossings of this water before you get here. You could probably try to hop over there somewhere, but uh, just know that it meanders three, four, five times. Typically, however, if you have waterproof boots, it's not even ankle deep, so you're fine. Okay, so I've just stuck my nose in it. <laughs> so there's a mountain bike in here, and his tracks come up to this point, which means, and it's recent mountain bike, maybe in the last three days, four days, along the river flats, which of course, these are not in flood right now. It's not too bad at all, really. So the trail actually hugs this bank, and you can see it right here trail hugging the bank but we're going to try to stay down on the flats for a bit in case we can avoid more deadfall let's do the ford cam <laughs> not even worth it really so the trail's right there i can see it and i can't go too too much further because i have to get up to that trail the guys are trying to find a place to cross so they can minimize their foot wetness but uh yeah Deadfall's just been spectacular. So, you know, if I can do several hundred meters of this, and then climb up, I'm a happy guy. There's a channel that hugs the left side here as we're heading down river. Well, we would have stayed out in the flats. Just kept chugging along. The view's a lot nicer, of course. But, now this trail's not bad at all. This is uh, walkable at a reasonable pace, which, uh, We'll take. There's a beautiful view for you coming up. Boom. Look at that. <sighs> Ouch. Major wildlife sighting. Hey, little mouse. Hello, little man. Oh, I didn't mean to scare you. There. Say hi to everybody. Yeah. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Cutie. Okay, this should be a little bit of a landmark here. We should make a pretty good swing to the left to start following the North Saskatchewan River. And this 
puts us about 5.8 kilometers from the car. Which is good because, you know, 20K on a good trail is a pretty good day. But my goodness, have we had some things to deal with. And apparently, still do. If you look on the Topo map or Gaia or any of these things, there's a lake and it is right in there. And she's green. Wow. At the top of the hill back there, we saw an old trail going down to it with lots of blazes. The old, let's cut in the tree with a machete kind of blaze. And um, of course, then they put rocks and said, you know, do not go down. So you start to wonder, was there a campsite there in the old days? But oh man, that's some green looking water today. So maybe that's why it's closed over the years because it wasn't that good from a water perspective. Ah, who knows? The meanderings of stew. Ooh, podcast. New idea for the empire. <laughs> oh God, that's funny. Sorry, that was for myself. Well, that is the trail, or was. It's now apparently the new trail because they've given up, basically. You can see they've cut what is a reroute instead of trying to keep the main trail, which went through there, open. So, obviously, you can see why that's an issue. Pretty major slide area. <laughs> Less than a couple of kilometers from the car, I can already hear the traffic from the Icefields Parkway, or what I call the Canada Dream Parkway. Uh, middle of the week, so not too busy, but, uh, well, it's usually quite busy. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll get up here soon and find out how's the hike. But uh, I thought I'd have a couple of notes. You know, I always like to have some notes. Hi there, how are you? Ooh, look at this. Um, Castlegar Meadows via the Saskatchewan Glacier. Oh man, the first three days were epic. I mean, epic. We all had perma smiles. We get up to the top of the glacier and uh, all did like a high five, fist pumps and all that kind of like macho stuff. And uh, had a great time exploring the cave and all that. And then of course, things changed. This trail is in very, very rough shape. And if I were to enter from here, where we are exiting as is the traditional route. Boy, I don't know, work reward. Whether it's, I mean, the meadows are stunning and the hydrology of the meadows is stunning, but my God, this trail. I mean, even today, it's supposed to be an old abandoned fire road. I mean, she's long abandoned. This is great walking, by the way, what I've shown you in the last few clips compared to some of the stuff I couldn't show you because I was trying not to trip. <laughs> so anyway, that's what happens, right? And then going through the berm was rough as well. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if you're going to do this and you think you can do the glacier walk, that's so rewarding. I mean, I think back to the first and second nights, just stunning, stunning. And uh, I think in a few years, to be quite honest, that's probably going to be our only entry point that makes sense. Wow, there's an old bridge. And look at that. It's actually somewhat usable. Woohoo! Well, here we are. We've made it. We're going to cross the bridge, which is in better shape than the last one we saw. <laughs> hey, look, I think they took a plank from this one. We're going to cross the bridge and find out how's a hike. Well, Castlegar Meadows via the Saskatchewan Glacier. John has done it before. Scott has done it before. Neil and I have not done it before. And I thought it was epic. But first, gentlemen, whoever wants to go first, how's the hike? I've done it twice. The first time with a broken ankle for the last uh, three days. <laughs> that made it 
special, but when Scott said he wanted to do the hike again, I was in in a heartbeat. I think I responded to his email in 30 seconds. Neil? I mean, the hike's quite a challenge, but every day had a different challenge. And I remember the first time I've ever forded a river was on this trip. Woo! And I remember my heart beating really <laughs> fast before I stepped foot <laughs> in that water. But I made it across and we had high fives all around. So Yeah, that was a tough day and we were like slogging along. And all of a sudden you get to this river crossing and, oh, something to do, right? <laughs> Scott, you're an old hand at this. What did you think? Well, it's a tough one now. Uh, the lack of maintenance for so many years has made this a, a hard hike out. But going over the ice in the beginning on the Saskatchewan Glacier, hiking up the lateral moraine and seeing, just, uh, seeing the uh, Castle Guard Meadows again, it's worth it. And it's, all the waterfalls. Yeah, and, it's beautiful. It's yeah, incredible. It's quite a beautiful place. Yeah, well, I want to thank Scott for the invite again and planning another hike. It was easy for me just to tag along. Neil and John, a pleasure to get to know you. John, uh, Scott said so many nice things about you, and now I know that he really? doesn't tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I think it was awesome. The day of the glacier was, that's a highlight of my life so far. I mean that. That was just a, a stunning, epic day. So, hey, if you have any questions, and you should after watching this, especially about bear hangs. Uh, put, <laughs> we'll put, put out a new video on that one, sure. I think we need to do something, guys. Uh, comments and questions, put them below. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>